Hey everybody, welcome back to Art of the Cart. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna show you kind of a simple technique to begin to learn in watercoloring. It's a technique that you'll use in a lot of different ways when you're watercoloring. It's how to make a basic gradient. So what I'm gonna be using for this is I have my watercolor paper, which you'll find is a little bit thicker and more absorbent than just normal drawing paper. And I went ahead and taped the edges to the board. And what this is going to do is gonna help prevent it from buckling and, and warping as bad. Um, helps keep the paper flat. I'll also be using a paintbrush, a little bit of water, and of course, my watercolors. So the first step I'm going to do in this technique is I'm gonna angle my board up just a little bit. So I'm gonna take this roll of tape that I use and I'm actually going to place it underneath my board. And I'll lay, set my board right on top of that. And what this is gonna do is gonna create a little flow of gravity so that the water is going to begin to start pooling downward. The next step is to put a wash on my paper and that simply means applying some clean water to your paper to get it prepped and ready for the pigment. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just gonna use sideways motions and I'm just gonna begin pooling some water down. And as you put apply water to your paper, you're gonna notice that um, it'll do its different things. One is if you have a lot of water on there, and I don't know if I can get it to show this, if I can get it in the light, right? It's really, really shiny. And so this means the paint is gonna spread very quickly. Later on, I'll, probably sh I'll try to show you, it will be foggy. You'll still see it wet, but it won't be shiny. It will just be kind of foggy. That means that the paint is going to spread very slowly. And then if it's dry paper like down here, the paint is gonna stay exactly where you put it. So just remember, the more water you have on your paper, the more the paint is going to spread. Think of paint like a um, herd of wild cows and the water is their corral. Wherever the water is, the cows can go. If you have some dry, uh, dry paper is like your fence. If you have two wet spots on your paper and you wanna keep the color away from it, you want some dry area in between. But if that dry area has any kind of water going across it, it's like your fence broke and your cows are gonna escape and then you have to go fix your fences. And that's what people find most frustrating with watercolor is they think, um, they think of watercolor as kind of like regular paint, where you put it, it's gonna stay. But no, watercolor is free and flowing and likes to go wherever it wants to go. So, but it will only go where there's water. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a gradient of a sunset. And so I'm gonna first start off with my evening sky color, which I'm gonna use this really nice indigo color here. And I'm gonna load my brush up with some really nice thick color. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna apply it up here on the wet part of my paper. And you'll see that it will begin to feather out and fan out a little bit, but it's not going too fast because already the water has begun to start absorbing into my paper and it's not spreading as fast. Also, if I use the higher quality paints that you use, the more that it will feather out and spread. Um, and if you use kind of a less, less expensive, kind of a lower quality, you're gonna find that they don't spread very well at all. So I'm gonna feather this down into my dry area. But I want my concentrated color up towards the top. Now I'm going to choose a different color. I'm gonna go with a cool purple right over here. And again, I'm gonna load my brush up with a lot of really good color. And I'm gonna go down a little bit further than I want my color to start, just because I want, that's the main concentrate of where I want my color to be. Then I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna very lightly, with a very light hand, begin to brush it up. And you're gonna see, you're, you'll see that you've done it right when the two colors blend together without a line. So you don't see where the blue stops and the purple starts. Same thing I'm down here, I'm gonna feather this down, diluting it with water, so it's gonna dilute the concentrated color, and it's gonna fade down here. But again, my main streak of color is gonna be right up in here. Now I'm gonna switch over to a nice rosy pink right here, and again, load my brush up with that color. I'm gonna apply my color where I want the main concentrate to be, and then I'm gonna feather that up with a very light hand, barely applying any pressure to my board when I'm moving this. When I get down to where it's a little bit drier, I might add a little bit more pressure. And then just bring that down. 
Now you can see I'm leaving a little bit of streaking in here um, because I want this to be a sky. I kind of want that almost hazy cloud effect, but you could go just continue brushing your brush across this and it'll really just smooth that out and you could, you wouldn't be able to tell anything. But I like this here. It almost looks like a little bit of a hazy cloud that's caught a little bit of this um, evening sun and so it's colored, but you can just see a little bit of the blue under there. The last color I'm going to add down here at the bottom is I'm going to add a nice kind of um, yellow. I'm going to apply this color, I'll apply this yellow down here at the bottom and I'm going to bring it on up, adding some more water to my brush to blend those colors together. Watercolor is something you kind of have to move a little bit fast with. You can't just paint a little bit and then at any point just stop and then be able to come back. You have to kind of finish it in sections or washes. Um, while this wash is still wet with all the color, I'm able to manipulate the colors, blend, add more color to it without it um, looking forced. Like here, I can add some more dark in here because it's still wet up here. It's still going to blend nicely down. And pull in some of my black. I'm going to put just a little black. I want to gray this out just a little bit. And I can go ahead and just continue all the way down. Because everything is still wet, I'm able to do that. If this was dry and I tried to do this, I'm going to get a really bad brush stroke and it's going to add another layer of a wash. So it's going to kind of look like when you're coloring with a marker and you color one way and then you go back over the marker and you color a different way and you see that the marker marks. It'll have that kind of effect here if I let my painting dry completely. I can go back in pick up some oranges and add some really nice orange tones in here if I want to, if I want to make it a little bit brighter. I can go ahead and add a really some more purple, make a little bit more vivid in here. Because watercolor paper is thicker, you can add and, and move and work the paint on your paper a lot more than you could an average just piece of paper. If this was just a regular piece of um, art paper, um, already it would be um, ripping and tearing and, and all of that because it's just not meant for, for that kind of abuse. Where watercolor paper can totally take a little bit more um, use and, and rubbing and stuff like that. So. Once you have the gradient the way that you want it and you don't want to change anything, you're going to let this completely dry before you begin adding something. If I was to begin to paint in mountains or an ocean and I applied my paint, because my paper is wet, it's going to feather out everywhere and going to mix with everything and, and that's where a lot of people get frustrated and that's the number one frustrating cause for people. They don't let their paper dry. So give it a few um, hours to dry really well, or use a blow dryer, you can blow dry with that if you want to, if you're anxious to paint something on top of this. But uh, yeah, our gradient sunset is done. So hopefully you found this helpful and um, are able to paint your own gradients, whether you do a sunset or a sunrise or just a gradient of color, maybe a rainbow, it would work the same way with that. Remember, the more water, the more your paint's going to spread. Thanks so much for joining me on this video, and I hope this helped you out with your watercolor painting. If you do a painting with a gradient and you want to show me, I would love to see it. You can post your photos on my Facebook page or Instagram, and I'll leave those descriptions in the um, descriptions in the link below. And I'll leave those links in the description box below. Till next time, God bless you guys. Bye bye.